What do you learn about the Bible in the church? Uh, yes, that's an interesting question, and I can give you a truthful answer, because I was there for 20 years of my life. I would not call that evangelical. I'd call it Church of England, mainstream, not really evangelical. We didn't have the fundamental beliefs of evangelicals, nor were we Catholics. Protestant, but evangelical, in America at least, means a super biblical attempt to be purely biblical, and that was not the Church of England. We didn't talk about the detail of Scripture at all. We were in a building that had been there for hundreds of years. Names of the pastors for centuries were listed on the wall, sang beautiful hymns, but we did not learn the Bible or discuss it at home ever. We vaguely imagined that if we were good people, we would go to heaven as disembodied souls when we die. When I was 20, I was sent to the University of Oxford, and I was invited to, quote, get saved at an evangelical meeting. I went back to my room at Oxford and I said, what does this mean, getting saved? And he was a retired admiral from the British Navy. The sermon probably lasted for 10 minutes. And then I was at a boarding school where equally I do not remember anything particular from the sermons. What we did by way of Bible was not equal to what we did with music or mathematics or languages, which we took very seriously. So with that then, I began to read the Bible seriously, and that was about 1956. So one needs to establish, first of all, what God it was that Jesus was promoting. Who is the God of Jesus? What is the great commandment about God that Jesus recommended and taught? They never taught you that in church either. No, never, never heard that. anything about no. that. Well, that question can be answered very easily in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 and following. There was a Jew who was friendly to Jesus on this question. Jesus was asked by this Jew, what is the greatest of all the commandments. Jesus answered it by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. The Hebrew people, the Jewish people to this day, call the Shema, the Hear, O Israel. In Hebrew, it goes like this, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. The Lord our God is one single Lord, one person, one Father, one God, one Adonai. That is what Jews taught their children from the age of two to learn. But amazingly, this creed, this definition of the true God was not being taught in the Church of England at all. Not with any clarity. They do not, this would be true of evangelical churches and Roman Catholic churches, they do not discuss the creed that Jesus said was the most important command of all. What has happened to make this a silent subject, something that is never discussed? The answer is well known to historians of the church. When the Bible was finished being written, let's say in the first century AD, there was a massive influence from Greek philosophy, which was popular, and so the church caved in, gave in to that Greek philosophy and redefined God. And then the church leaders, so-called church fathers, argued and discussed and debated who God is and who Jesus is for about three or four hundred years. It was a very ugly time of debate and excommunication and conflict. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 had asked the Christians to be of one mind and one judgment, not thousands of disputing denominations. So anybody who is thinking at all will see that a problem of great magnitude has happened. Major question is, how did Jesus define God? And we've seen that Jesus was a Jew defining God as a single divine individual, not three in one or one in three, but one single person, the Father. And so it would be very dishonest to claim sola scriptura when in fact one is following 
a lot of traditions which are not found in the Bible at all. So the ordinary reader should get himself or herself a modern translation. Let's say the Jerusalem Bible would be a good one, either the new or the old. Then you will begin to think like Jesus, best thing that can happen to you. Remember that Jesus asked Peter and the disciples this question, who do you say that I, Jesus, am? Who do you say, who do you think that I am? And that was most important, that they identified Jesus correctly. And Peter did not answer that question by saying, I believe you are God, the second member of a triune God. Jesus had not heard of the Trinity. Peter had not heard of the Trinity. And so if you want to listen to Jesus carefully, you must lay aside those alien traditions which came many hundreds of years later. And I remember later asking the clergyman about the Trinity, and he said, yes, we do believe in the Trinity, but that is the one sermon that I very much do not like to give, and I'm supposed to talk about this once a year on Trinity Sunday. He obviously found it very puzzling himself, and the public would find it equally difficult, and yet it is assumed without thought that this is what we are supposed to believe. If one is claiming to follow Jesus, automatically one must follow his teachings, and his teachings are more than simply loving your neighbor as yourself, although that's very important, of course, and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that's to say the death of Jesus to cover our sins and his resurrection are also fundamental to the Christian faith. And also the fact that Jesus was supernaturally fathered in the womb of Mary, who was a virgin. Jesus has to be the lineal descendant of David because he has to be a descendant of uh, the tribe of Judah and ultimately a descendant of Eve. And so the idea that Jesus is God would automatically complicate and confuse the first and great commandment that Jesus is not God, because God is the only one, the Father is the only one who is the true God, John 17, 3. This is perfectly obvious once one understands that Jesus and the New Testament writers were all Jewish by training and by belief in the one God. Mm -hmm.